to change gears a little bit, uh, it's great to deliver maps. It's great to have simple maps for people to access and use, but what good is the map if it doesn't tell you something? If it doesn't deliver some sort of valuable nugget of business information or some way that's gonna help you improve uh, the way you're operating or improve the way a process is handled. Uh, so that's what our next presentations are about. Ways that you can leverage ArcGIS right now to gain business insights and improve the way you operate your business. To show us our first example of that, I've got my friend Peter Becker here, who's gonna talk to us about imagery and all the things you can do with image processing and analysis. Peter? Thank you, Adam. So, many of you, I'm sure, use the topographic base map. And we know that a lot of people are using the world imagery as a base map. Actually, there are about 50 million views of this base map every single day. But there's a lot of other content on ArcGIS Online, imagery content. For example, NAEP. You can turn on the NAEP image services for the United States. They're temporal, high resolution, or one meter resolution data. They're also multispectral. You can also turn on other data. For example, terrain models, global terrain models at varying resolutions. You can hear, see here in the Houston area, it's actually very high resolution. But you can also add other data. So if you go and browse the Living Atlas, there's huge numbers of different data sets available, including image layers, for example, Landsat, which I can immediately add and get very fast access to Landsat data. Now, this Landsat data, for example, is global. It covers literally the whole globe and is updated extremely regularly, literally daily. And these web maps can then be used in a range of applications. This is an example of a web app built on Web App Builder using widgets. And with this application, I can zoom into my area, um, which is going to be around Midland. And let's, for example, zoom in here. And we're seeing the same Landsat service. And what we can do is to look at the different band combinations. So I'm looking at here in an agriculture band combination. I could say I'm interested in natural color, which is actually pan sharpening the data on the fly. Or I could look at, for example, color infrared information. Let's have a look at, for example, vegetation. There's not that much around there. Um, or let's say moisture actually becomes more interesting, starting to show where, where, where there is moisture. So we can look at the different bands of the imagery. But we can also go to time. If I turn on the time slider, you'll see that the latest image was from three days ago. Okay? But we can go back in time. Let's go down to 2014. Let's actually go all the way back to 1992. So let's actually do some analysis. What I want to do is select two dates. One, a year ago, 2006, um, 2006, April 2016. And let's take the latest date from a couple of days ago. And ask the server to actually compute the difference. So what is the difference between these two different data sets? The computer is now serving it, and I can change the way that it actually computes this. In this case, it's actually computing and actually highlighting in green all the areas where new well pads have been built, where they're white, they existed, where they're green, in those time, there are new well, well, well pads have been built. So I can vary this in various ways. I could, for example, turn on, the, on a time slider and view the difference this way, or I could actually quantify the data and actually say compute a difference mask, and this is now actually going to compute a mask of the area. Let's turn that off. Actually compute a mask um, of the area that has actually been updated, and I can actually see the, vol the area um, that's changed. <clears throat> so, I can access the uh, various multispectral data, but this is low resolution. What about getting to higher resolution? Well, we could go and add data sets, for example, the world imagery or the um, NAEP imagery, but what I'm actually going to do instead is actually add imagery from a new service that's been provided by Digital Gold Globe called All Access and Analytics, and it pro provides you access to over 100 petabytes of Digital Globe imagery that you can subscribe to on a per kilometer basis and get access to this imagery. 
So here is the imagery that I can use as, let's say, a simple, uh, as a simple base map. Let me just find my area. I can use it as a simple base map. Alternatively, I can actually access the imagery using the on-the-fly processing, which is actually pan sharpening the data. So this is actually going to pan sharpen the data on the fly, and I can get access to the full resolution data. Now, this data is not actually data that you download. It's actually a service where you actually subscribe to the data. Digital Globe gives you access to that data in the cloud. You take your servers and put your servers in the cloud next to the data. So it's really following the real cloud best practice of moving the processing to the data. So we can access the data, and we can also, as before, basically turn on time and have a look at how this has changed over time. I can go, this, the latest image I have here is from February. I could go back to, for example, November 2016, go further back, go further back, literally all the way, in this case, to, to 2008, to see how this area has been rapidly developing. In addition, we can access the multispectral bands. So, similar to Landsat 8, <clears throat> the digital globe images actually have multiple bands. So I can see these in different ways. For example, looking at the false color imagery, or, um, you know, let's say, veg vegetation, or actually some interesting indices which give information about the content of the ground. The other things I can do is to use this web application to perform simple types of anal analysis. Let's, for example, compute a mask in this case, and let's have a look at uh, if we actually use um, actually land built up index. We can actually quantify the area of land that has actually been built up. So, <clears throat> other, other type of processing we can do is, for example, let's go and do some more advanced processing. Here I'm going to actually set parameters related to doing land classification. I can apply these, and on the fly, the server is actually going to perform segmentation of the imagery, compute the segments, which I can then utilize in further classification workflows. But the real power of image processing actually lies in ArcGIS Pro. Pro is an advanced workstation for image processing, analysis, and management. And here, I can access not only local data, but also the same services from the cloud. So I can access this Landsat data, or um, let's say turn on those same services that we saw before from Digital Globe, and access these data. Now within ArcGIS Pro, it's gonna, I'm not sure why it's asking me to sign in right now. So within ArcGIS Pro, uh, there are a lot of additional tools for, for processing imagery. So for example, there are tools for classification of imagery, various type of image processing um, data, as well as various indices that we can compute. There are also a range of raster functions which uh, become available. So if we turn that off, let's just turn it. If I go to the actual raster functions, there are over 100 specific raster functions that you can add and process. These can be either processed on the fly, locally, on the desktop, or transmitted to the server. So if we actually put, for example, a, um, an index, this is actually being processed on the server. Alternatively, I can actually use Pro as a client for Rastra Analytics. And Rastra Analytics allows me to perform processing on the server and the processing on the server basically processes the data, and in this case, if we turn on the segments, it's actually pre-computed these segments in advance, so I have very quick access to the segment data. Now, what if you want higher resolution? Well, we know a lot of you have, have access or intend to get access to drones. So ArcGIS can also be used to manage the drone imagery. If we go, for example, here's a sample of some, some drone imagery. If it comes up. 
So high-resolution drone imagery for an area, it can be easily accessed through ArcGIS. This is actually managed either on-premise or, again, move that to the cloud environments. And here, within ArcGIS, you can quickly not manage a single project, but large numbers of different projects that might be scattered over very large areas or different points in time. So let's hear, for, here's, for example, an, an, an industrial area where we might have access to, for example, a digital terrain model. Or let's go to another area where we have access to high-resolution imagery. And here we're showing the author photos that are pre-generated. What we can also do is turn on the on-the-fly author images. And what this actually allows you to do is to get really access to the full resolution imagery, which can then be used for inspection type workflows. So we've shown examples of how ArcGIS can be used to access massive volumes of imagery, either online or in the cloud, use that imagery either as a back background or for analysis purposes. <clears throat> Additionally, the data can be on-premise or in the cloud, and all that imagery can really be integrated into all your different applications. Thank you. Thank you, Peter. Thank you. I might be selling myself short, but I feel smarter just after listening to that. That's some pretty amazing stuff, and I'm sure that I'm not alone. Don't you just want to play with that? I want to get that app and just start zooming around to different places and changing all the landscape classifications and looking at different things. That's pretty amazing stuff. It is my opinion that this is a massive opportunity for you. I think you all have access to these capabilities right now. You all manage imagery. You all have imagery. These are all things that you can do right now to gain business insights within your organization. So I think there's a massive opportunity there for you to act as catalysts to spark uh, applications like you just saw, especially with the drones. There's not a week goes by that I don't talk to a customer in the petroleum space that is doing something with drones. It's unreal to hear the types of things that you thought only the military would do or some secret agency or something is happening every day on a well pad from some automated little capsule and a little helicopter thing flies out and starts snapping photos. Oh, and you want to see if something has changed on the surface, if there's tire tracks or a sheen of some sort, that thing's going to capture it. And you're going to be able to slice back in time and see exactly what happened when it happened. I think there's a massive opportunity for you to gain business insights with imagery in ArcGIS.